or we can we can go up to the cog up top and again into the accounting and settings and then on the expenses tab over here we want to make sure that that this and i think it is now checked off by default that we're going to say track billable expense expenses and items to income so you have a single account or in multiple accounts now this gives you a little bit more flexibility because again you would think that it should now pull in to an income account but it's still not completely flexible because like if i go back in here and i look at that and i look at that item right there and and if i look at it i still don't have a product or service this is the thing right here that usually allows us to tell more specifically which income account it's going to hit so quickbooks may still have to use kind of like a generic income account for all the billable items that it's pulling over into the invoice which might be fine but again we don't have that, that as much control as we do if we were able to use items in order to create you know the invoices and the sales receipts so let's do it again and let's see the difference i'm going to close this out and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to the first tab again. And let's make another one. I'm gonna to go to the plus button and I'm gonna do another check up top, another check again, and repeat a similar process, Office Depot, out of the checking account, same date, numbers correct now. It's trying to memorize the last transaction, which is nice. This time let's make it for 200 just to switch things up a bit. I'm gonna make it billable again, but now I've changed the options. And this time I'm gonna put it to that 3005, which was the sub, uh, the sub customer. So let's do it to that one this time. And so that looks good. Let's save it and close it. This is gonna record a decrease to the checking account. The other side going into supplies. That's good. The point we want is to pull it into the billable item uh, after that. So I'm gonna save it and close it. And then let's make an invoice. I won't check the transaction because we should. the transaction is fairly obvious on that one. Let's go to the invoice now and say we went to job 3005. 3005. So now it wants to pull that in again. So we're going to say, all right, add that, add that one over, por favor. And then everything looks good. Notice that down here, it's still, I should have added in the description that it was office supplies so it pulls over so i'm going to put supplies here so that they can see the description notice again though it's, it doesn't give us as much control but hopefully even though i don't have an item quickbooks can then apply it to an income account at least picking an income account to put it to as opposed to decreasing the expense account so that's going to be the goal this will increase accounts receivable the other side hopefully go into an income account that quickbooks is going to make up not based on the item, but based on the fact that we said it was billable and we want you to put it into an income account. So let's save it and close it. Go to the tab to the right and then run it. And then if I go into the A to the R, we can see this one went up. That looks good. Let's go back and then tab to the right and run it. Actually, let's go back to the reports and then run it. And then now you've got this other income account. So they made up an income account, billable expense income account. So that's nice. But again, you don't have a lot of flexibility to change that. That might be more than fine though. You might say, hey, I don't need any more flexibility than that. As long as it's in an income account, I'm happy. But if you needed more flexibility than that, you'd need to come up with a system where you can use items to apply to the accounts you want, possibly that being like services, for example. Now, another method that you can try here is to set up an item but it's a little bit more complex for most people, I think, to when they're when they're setting it up. But if you wanted a more control, you can try when you're entering the expense or check side of things, for example, to instead of uh, just adding a category here, you can try to add an item. So let's say you're paying the same supplies expense. You can basically set up the item and say, I'm going to make a new item down below and I want it to be like a non inventory item so that it's not tracking the units of inventory, but it's gonna have both and like an expense side of things and as well as a, a sales side of things. And then if you were to say that the item uh, name is gonna be supplies, let's say that you're gonna pull over and then the category, uh, we'll keep the category there. I'm gonna put this description supplies. I'm not gonna put an amount here because I'm gonna populate the amount every time. And then on the income, maybe I want it to go to services 
and that gives me the control. That's where the control is. I can put it to services as opposed to the billable income or whatever they use. I'll say it's non-taxable. So I could say it's a non-taxable item. And then on the purchasing side of things, I'm gonna have a cost. I won't put the cost here, but the purchase account, instead of going to purchases account or like cost of goods sold or something like that, I'm gonna put it to supplies expense. So let's say supplies, uh, office supplies, or I'll just put it to supplies I think we've been using, and then I won't have a preferred vendor. So now when I buy supplies from Office Depot, I can save this and I can then pull it in and I'm not gonna use the category and just record it to office supplies, but rather I'm gonna use the items and then I'm gonna make it a billable item. And the item is driving it on the cost side to post it to the right account, which is supplies. And then when I pull it over to the income account, the item now allows us to assign the proper item account we want to use, which was the revenue account that we used. So that's a workaround that could be that could be useful, but I think it's also got its own problems because of then obviously you have to use items as opposed to categories. It also causes some issues with the bank feeds because if you're populating your payments through the bank feeds like many small companies will, it's more difficult to you to add an item. In that case, you can you can, you only have the capacity possibly to add the account. So that's a but that's a method that could could be useful for some people if you want more control about the income account and to try to use the items in, con in conjunction with the billable thing. So just a, a, an idea to think about, I won't record this now though. So I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say, do you want to leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. Now, the other thing we just touched on is the differences between, if I go into the sales tab and the customers, we've got the customers that we set up in a prior presentation as a sub customer or a job would be the name from the old uh, or the other version QuickBooks desktop version. And we saw that we can run reports, you know, by customer in here. And then we, we also have the projects which work in a similar fashion, although you can use them together because you might have like a customer and then an overarching job for them or a department. And then you might have the projects attached to like a sub customer or job, for example. But just to look at the projects over here, we, we then had some information for the project, which we mainly did to project number two. So if I go into project number two, now we've got the information related to it with uh, the, the income and uh, expenses that were assigned to project number two. And then it gives a, a, our recap. We have our reports. We've got the transactions that we can see here, invoices, uh, the billable expense, the check and the time charge, time activity that we can look at, project reports. If we want to see the reports themselves, we can have the attachments over here. And if I went into uh, the reports, the overall reports, then I can look at, we have this project, project profitability summary that you could, you could run that as well from, we'll do, take it from 010123 to 123123 and run that. So you also have, you know, this report that you can take a look at. So the, the projects, this job cost kind of system is a whole, a whole nother thing. We do have courses on that in and of it themselves. Be careful when you're thinking about the different tools that you can use. You got all these cool tools now. You've got jobs, which are now sub customers. And you also have now the, the class tracking, location tracking, tags, and now the projects tools.